Hello and welcome to this third film um, from the reaction and equations topic. This one, now that you know hopefully how to write equations, deals with predicting the observations for the reaction and it basically teaches you how to use the data sheet to find out some information. Okay, So the particular information we're going to find from the data sheet is about solubility and colour. This has been discussed quite a lot in previous films, so this film really just practice with it and maybe makes it a bit clearer about what some of the things are that have been mentioned and we'll use the information from the data sheet to predict what we're going to see happening in reaction. Okay, <coughs> here is part of the data sheet or the part of the data sheet that we're actually going to be using. Okay, and hopefully you can see we've got the solubility rules over here which you've hopefully been using quite a lot up until now. And over this side, you've got the colours of different substances, okay? What's quite important here is, although it's not included in a table, is this information here, okay? And that says that in general, ionic solids have the same colour as that of any coloured ion they contain. And here are the coloured ions, okay? Right? Two colourless ions in general produce a white solid, and the selected exceptions to these two basic rules are noted here. Okay, so it's not good enough just to read what's in the tables, it's also important to read what's around them. Okay, off we go. Acid and metal, remember we've done right in the equation for this. This produced magnesium chloride and, and sorry, magnesium chloride and hydrogen in the case of the first reaction. Now, in general, when these reactions happen, when we form hydrogen, we're always going to see bubbles of colourless gas. Okay? It's not good enough just to say colourless gas because if it wasn't for the bubbles, then you wouldn't see the colourless gas. And this is all about what you're going to see. Okay? Not what happens, but what you can see happen. Right? So here is a colourless solution. And remember, as was discussed earlier on, we're going to try and describe everything in the equation. A colourless solution mixed with a grey solid. Most metals will be grey solid, except for gold, which is a yellow solid. Okay, and copper, which is a brown one. Okay, so these two things are mixed. What do we produce? Well, we produce magnesium chloride in solution. Okay, so just going back to this one just for a moment, we'd have a look in here for the colour of magnesium. We can't see it there. Chloride is also a colourless ion, so we're going to form a white solid, but they're in solution, so the magnesium chloride will be a colourless solution. We'll get a colourless solution and our bubbles of colourless gas. Which isn't an abbreviation you can use in the table, okay? But I'm using it here. Nitric acid and calcium. Nitric acid, like all acids, is a colourless solution. Calcium, like most metals, is a grey solid. So what did we form? We formed calcium nitrate. We can look up the colours of those ions and we'll see we'll have a colourless solution because calcium nitrate is also soluble, so it's not going to be a solid. It's going to stay in solution and bubbles of colourless gas. Okay? If you can't remember what happened in these reactions, they're exactly the same reactions as we had in the previous film. So just go back and check that if you're not sure. It should be in your notes. Next one, acid and base. All right, we're starting with sulfuric acid and copper 2 oxide. That is a colourless solution. Okay, acid and base is going to make salt and water, so we're not going to get the bubbles of colourless gas this time. But we can check that copper 2 oxide, well, copper 2 is a blue ion, but it's one of the exceptions on the list. This is a black solid. Okay, you can see that on the data sheet if you go and check. What are we going to make? Well, we're going to make a blue solution because we made copper sulfate in water. Okay, so the black solid dissolves in the colourless solution to produce a blue solution. Right, we're describing everything in the equation. Ethanoic acid is an acid, so it's a colourless solution. We're mixing it with sodium hydroxide, which, if we were told it was solid, would be a white solid because we've got colourless ions. Okay, if we were told it was a colourless solution, then two colourless solutions mixed. What do we form? Well, 
we formed sodium thanoate, which is a colorless uh, a pair of colorless ions and soluble too, so a colorless solution. Okay, I'm looking on the solubility rules to check if my product is solid or not. If it's soluble, it won't. If it's sorry, if it's soluble, it will just dissolve, so it'll make a solution. Okay, if it's insoluble, it will become solid. So it's going to form a colourless solution, and water's not going to change the colour of that. So two colourless solutions mix, and we form a colourless solution. Or no visible reaction would be fine. Okay, because no change. All right, moving on to the next type of reaction. And remember, with our data sheet in hand, we are looking at things like solubility and colour. Okay, acid plus carbonate makes salt and water and carbon dioxide. So again, we're going to see bubbles of colorless gas forming every time here okay because of the carbon dioxide but don't abbreviate it to this in your test okay this is just an abbreviation i'm using here just to make the film a bit shorter really okay so hydrochloric acid and copper two carbonate we're going to form copper chloride and carbon dioxide water chloride we can look up the color of a Cu2 plus Aq ion, that one blue. Okay, so this is going to be a blue solution. This is one of our exceptions. It's actually a green solid. Okay, so we're going to have a colorless liquid solution is mixed with a green solid, and we're forming a blue solution and bubbles of colorless gas. Okay. We're describing everything in there. We're not just assuming that the examiner knows we know what things look like. Here's another colorless solution because it's an acid. Okay, colorless solution. This might be a white solid, sodium hydrogen carbonate. Or alternatively, it might be a solution. Okay, but we'd be told a colorless solution, in fact, if it was dissolved in water, but we'd be told whether we we're using a solid or a solution if we were asked to predict the observations. Okay, what are we going to form? Sodium methanoate is a colorless solution. And we're going to form bubbles of colorless gas because carbon dioxide formed. Okay, not just colorless gas forms, all right, but two colorless solutions mix, or a colorless solution mixed with a white solid forms a colorless solution and bubbles. Of colorless gas. Okay, remember the bubbles are what you see. You don't see a colorless gas. Moving on to precipitation reactions, we've got lead nitrate and sodium carbonate. We can look up the colors of these things. Lead is a colorless ion, so we've got a colorless solution here. Sodium carbonate, that could be a solution or a solid, but if this is a precipitation reaction, it's likely going to be a solution. So colorless because sodium is colourless. Okay, so a colourless solution. Two colourless solutions mix. What do we form? Well, the lead carbonate forms a precipitate. We can look up the colour of lead and the colour of carbonate. We find they're colourless, so we get a white precipitate. Okay, in, in what? Well, in sodium nitrate solution, which is a colourless solution. All this information is just coming from that table on the data sheet. Okay, hydrochloric acid, there's another colorless solution. All right, and silver nitrate, which is also a colorless solution. Again, we could be using the solid, but it's unlikely because we're forming, we're using, we've got precipitation reaction. Okay, so we're forming a solid. If we hadn't, if we'd used the solid, we wouldn't see that solid forming. Okay, so we've got two colorless solutions. What we're going to form, we're going to form silver chloride. That is also a white precipitate because I can't find the colors of those two ions on my data sheet, so I assume it's white unless it's in that list of exceptions. Okay, and what have I got left? Nitric acid in a colorless solution. So remember, I'm going to be pedantic about these when I mark them, and so will the examiners. They want you to talk about all the reactants and all the products. So once again, for something like this, where a white precipitate forms, if you just say precipitate forms, white precipitate forms, you're not going to get the marks. Okay? You need to say what the things you start with look like and what the things you end up with. 
there is no point in trying to practice these observations if you can't predict the products of a reaction, right? And if you can't predict the products of a reaction, that's probably because you don't know the rules for the different types of reaction and you don't know your ion list, okay? So once again, if this is still something that you've been avoiding doing, don't leave it any longer. Get it sorted in your mind. And if you're having difficulty with these, practice is the best thing. Come and get some help if you need it.